which brings our grand total. So that is a fantastic price to be into this car. Well, back by popular demand, I'm gonna do a price reveal or price breakdown video of my 1969 Camaro. A lot of you guys have been asking about this car and a lot of you guys really liked the previous cost breakdown videos that I've done, especially the red Corvette Z06. Me personally, I think sometimes it's interesting and also financially wise to know almost to the dollar how much I have invested in a lot of these project vehicles. This one is no exception. I've been keeping a spreadsheet since I bought this car in January of 2020 with everything I've purchased for it and everything I have into it. So I thought you guys might find it interesting and I thought it might be fun to kind of do a quick build recap. And then at the end, we'll go through to the dollar how much it took to get my 1969 Camaro to look, sound and perform the way that it does. So we'll go through all that shortly, but right now this thing is dirty. I've been driving this thing every chance I get. It's been a pretty decent fall as far as weather is concerned. So I've been taking it out. I've got like five or 600 miles on it since I you know, put the Holly digital dash in and started recording miles. And uh, I think I've only washed it once and that was a couple months ago. So we've got some dirt, some dust, some dead bugs, some miles on this thing. And I'm about to go meet up with some car buddies for the day and evening and uh, we gotta make sure the rig's clean before we show up. Can't show up looking dirty, so let's back this thing out, get it washed up, go meet up with my boys, have some fun, and then uh, I think tomorrow we're gonna go through front to back, top to bottom, what it costs to get it here. Alrighty guys, it's a couple days later. We are back in the garage with the Camaro. Let's get into the reason you clicked on this video and that is the cost breakdown. So the way this format is gonna work is I'd like to do a quick recap of the entire build, you know, super, super high level, 
but back from January 2022 when I first bought the car to now. So basically everything that it took to get us to where we are now. And then once I'm done with that, we're going to go into some examples of, you know, why I think it's worth $125,000. And then we'll get into all the nitty gritty, you know, how we got to the grand total of about $50,000 that I have into this car. So let's jump into the recap and then we'll get to the money figures. All right. So if we take a trip back to January of 2022, I, Went down to Southern Massachusetts, loaded up the car, trailered it home, got it home, got it off the trailer. And uh, I think it was, they had, it had already snowed and they'd salted the road. So I think I took it down my private road that's not salted about a quarter of a mile. And then I put it right in the garage and we got right to work. Within like two days, I got right to work pulling the stock motor out of the car, which in this case was a or stock motor and transmission out of the car, which in this case was a 307 and TH 350. I also started tearing out a lot of the interior uh, in preparation for the six speed manual swap, as well as a basically complete overhaul of the wiring in the car. I then removed the TMI recovered front seats and swapped those out for a set of Corvo RRX seats and brackets, as well as fitted the car with a third pedal, the clutch pedal, and a hydraulic master cylinder from McLeod Racing. From there, it was time to find a motor and transmission for the car, so I hopped on a plane, a one-way flight down to Baltimore, Maryland, and picked up a 2010 Camaro SS with the LS3 and six-speed manual transmission and drove it all the way home to New Hampshire. Within two or three days of owning that car as well, I got to work pulling out the LS3 and TR6060 in preparation for its new home in the 1969 Camaro. I then got to work prepping the motor for a new cam and all new seals all around throughout the whole motor. Gave it a good cleaning, even pushed it outside in the snow in the middle of winter to give it a power wash to make sure that we were starting with a nice clean slate. I then got to work installing a host of new parts head gaskets, stage three BTR cam, valve springs, all new lifters, trays, timing components. Every seal, gasket, and wear item that you can think of was replaced on this LS3. Got my Holly oil pan installed so that the motor would be able to be installed in the stock 1969 Camaro subframe. BTR platinum valve springs were installed along with resurfacing of the head. And then the rest of the long block was assembled, torqued, and ready to go back in the car. I even topped it off with a set of speed engineering long tube headers. I then shifted my attention to the TR6060 out of the 2010 Camaro and bought a whole host of parts, including a brand new LS7 clutch, flywheel, in addition to a complete overhaul of the transmission to include converting it basically to a T56 Magnum. And I did this by completely disassembling the transmission all the way down to stripping the main shaft down to nothing, installing a T56 Magnum main shaft and then somehow completely putting it back together with all the T56 Magnum parts and everything went back together like it should. Gave her a fresh coat of paint, installed my shifter, and just like that, we had our own version of a TR6060 slash T56 Magnum hybrid that looked brand new and was ready to go in the car. Before going in the car, the transmission got a brand new GM LS7 slave cylinder and speed bleeder from Tick Performance. And then the transmission and LS3 were mated back together. Gave the subframe a quick cleanup and a fresh coat of matte black paint, just like the factory would have. And with that, all that was left to do was stab it in. And just like that, we had an LS3 and TR6060 swapped 1969 Camaro. I completed my fuel system with an assortment of aeromotive fittings, regulators, as well as some generic 6AN line to and from the tank, uh, which is a tank's ink unit. Then added some custom blue bayou paint to the intake manifold, as well as some gloss black to my custom smooth valve covers and fuel rails, as well as cleaned up and painted a couple other engine parts. I then made some custom spark plug wires and relocated my coils hidden below the floorboards, kind of down near the headers. Put it all together and with that we had one super clean, very sharp looking LS3 in my 1969 Camaro. 
Then came the seemingly astronomical task of wiring the car with the Holly Terminator X Max and integrating it into the stock 69 Camaro wiring harness. The Holly system was actually quite easy, very well laid out and easy to follow. It was just, I like to do everything neat. So I spent a lot of time with zip ties and, and wire wrap and a whole bunch of other stuff to really neaten up the rest of the wiring in the car. With all the wiring complete, I was able to boot up the Holly Terminator X software and check that all my sensors were reading properly. And I finally got to crank the car for the first time and actually build some oil pressure. Yes. Look at that. Shortly after that, I finished up some minor fuel tank wiring as well as plumbing the 6AN feed and return directly into the hat on the tank. Added some fuel, check for leaks, which there were none. And after some tweaks and tuning in the software, we finally fired up the LS3 and the Camaro for the very first time. Then got to work buttoning up the rest of the interior, including building myself a custom center console, which was actually just a modified version of the console that came in the car, but I had to do some custom fiberglass work to close up the hole from the horseshoe shifter and make room for my new T56 Hurst shifter. Added some Corbo seat belts, some paint and bodywork, installed a custom low car shifter boot, then some minor final reassembly and general cleaning of everything in the interior. And with that, the interior was pretty much complete uh, with the exception of my Holly Pro Dash. I was really happy with the way it came out, super clean, very tidy, and it was good to finally have the rat's nest of wiring that I've been looking at for the past eight months, all nice and concealed and, and hidden and, and neat. And as good as the open header sounded, the exhaust was obviously way too loud with just open collectors. So I got to work fabricating a completely custom TIG welded exhaust for the car, including a three inch X pipe, three inch bullet mufflers and a completely custom uh, configuration that went uh, under the rear end, but tucked up really nice and, and looked really good from the back of the car. All finished out to a set of stainless dual wall, four and a half inch tips that helped to fill the existing holes in the rear bumper. With the exhaust finished up and completely on the car, it was time to fire it up and see how it sounded. With the exhaust finished up and a new catch can installed, uh, as well as buttoning up some other minor things, I felt confident enough to take the car down the road for its first drive as an LS3 and six-speed swap 69 Camaro. Woo! First drive in my Camaro. No idea how fast we're going, but seems smooth, no horrible vibrations, no banging on the exhaust. With the car running and driving, I kind of wanted to know what was going on as far as engine vitals. So I got to work on something that I had procrastinated for a while, which was the 12.3 inch Holly digital dash, which is actually the first part that I ever ordered for this car. I always had a vision of having the 12 inch digital dash in a 69 Camaro, which I took on the challenge of trying to fit it into the completely stock OEM plastic 69 Camaro cluster. So after many, many hours of cutting, gluing, sanding, more gluing, more sanding, and tons of bodywork and paint. I had myself a custom bezel and a custom 12.3 inch Holly digital dash in my 69 Camaro that almost looked like it came that way from the factory. I then shifted my focus to the chassis a little bit and added some subframe connectors as well as some energy suspension polyurethane body mounts to stiffen up the chassis and prepare it for the additional horsepower that the LS3 was gonna output. And from there, I started to try and put some miles on the car to really see what, you know, might shake loose, what was going to need attention. But the car, the car drove awesome. I basically put it right up on the highway and uh, got it ready for the summer, summer 2023. With the car running and driving well, I decided to finally move on to some of the cosmetic modifications that I wanted to do, including powder coating all of the trim, door handles, mirrors, and anything chrome on the car to gloss black as well as fully tinting the car, 5% on the sides and rear and 35% on the entire windshield. With everything blacked out, the look of the car was really starting to come together. 
Up next, I decided to dig the C6 Z06 calipers that I'd had for over two years uh, sitting in the parts bin uh, out of the closet and decided to swap the four piston Willwoods that came on the front of the car for the C6 Z06 calipers. And you know I had to add my custom blue paint touch to match the intake manifold. Moving forward on the cosmetic side, I painted the grill gloss black, added some custom headlights as well as some Harley Davidson custom switchback running lights and turn signals. Really transformed the front end of the car. After six months of waiting, my Weld Ventura wheels finally showed up. So we got those unboxed, got them mounted up on some brand new Bridgestone Potenza tires and got those on the car. Just as I had hoped, the welds completely transformed the look of the car and cosmetically the car was pretty much exactly where I wanted it. With wheels that fit properly and the car looking the way I wanted to, I finally started to really rack up some miles on the car as, as summer drew to a close and fall moved in. Made some quick adjustments to the ride height on my RideTech coilovers. Brought the car to a buddy's shop for an alignment and then took the back roads home and really enjoyed a nice fall cruise. And that pretty much brings us to where we are today. The car has been absolutely perfect. I've put over 600 miles on it just this late summer and fall, and I've been trying to take it out and drive it as much as I possibly can. Now I know what you're thinking. Chris, what makes you think your 1969 Camaro is worth that price of 125,000? Well, here's a few cars that are just like this one for sale. All right, so comparable vehicles for sale. Uh, I'm gonna start with one that is not comparable, but just to give you an idea of where the bottom of the 1969 Camaro market is at. Here's one that clearly needs literally everything, just a rotted, rusty body, definitely doesn't run. I mean, just needs a complete restoration. Just, it needs everything. Sure, you got a trunk full of parts, but you know, the rockers are gone. There's just, it's a complete project card, 20 grand. So I'm sure there's already 17 of you in the comments that said that your uncle's buddy's best friend's cousin bought a 1969 Camaro back in 95 for two grand that was mint, but those days are gone. Okay, next up, this is a, uh, let's see, at some sort of dealer, we got unforgettable tangerine paint GM LS1 V8. So the LS1 is obviously all aluminum, but it is like the oldest LS motor. So that's another thing to mention here is that not every LS swapped car is the same. There's a difference between an iron block junk, you know, 4.8 that someone quickly hacked in versus a, you know, cleanly done LS7. So I'm not saying the LS1 is bad, but this is definitely a quote unquote lower end LS motor, especially in 2023. Uh, GM 4L60E. So Four speed automatic, nothing special, really not all that desirable. But again, or I guess I should say, this is this is a super nice card. You know, brand new paint, nice wheels. Um, yeah, wicked nice car, big brakes. Uh, custom interior to a, to a certain extent. Still the stock dash pad. Uh, nothing really done other than looks like auto meter gauges. 129,000, call it 130. Up next is, uh, a car that looks a lot like mine, same color. Uh, got, you know, similar style wheels, light tint on the windows, blacked out front end. The front bumpers are not tucked like mine are. It's still got the factory drip rails. This is an LS2, so pretty nice motor, but not as nice as the LS3 in mine. Uh, let's see. Fessler headlight, Fessler headlights, Bose wheels, LS2, blah, blah, blah. Nice for sale ad, gotta respect someone that writes out something like this. Uh, T56, so yeah, pretty similar car to mine. Obviously they didn't do any dress up like I did. You can still see the coils, no custom paint. Same Willwood master cylinder as mine. Somewhat custom interior. You know, still mostly stock looking, but looks good. It is a nice looking car, clean underside. Yeah, honestly very similar caliber car to mine. And, 150 grand. Up next, uh, here's one that's already sold, but I had saved in preparation for this video. Uh, this guy, Victory Lap Classics, does a lot of these first gen Camaro resto mods. So this car also is gray, similar color to mine, similar style wheels. Looks like four piston front disc brakes, four piston rear, 
clean body. Uh, looks like we got, what do we got? LS3, stage three cam, exact same as mine. TKO 600 five speed, so mine's a six speed. T56 Magnum, Willwood disc brakes, TMI interior, same as mine. So very, very similar car to mine. Uh, I would argue that mine has a nicer Holly digital dash and a nicer transmission, but other than that, pretty similar caliber. Sold almost 200,000. I mean, who knows if he actually got 195,000, but he definitely got somewhere close to that. And the last one I've got here is a 1968 Camaro. In general, the 1969 Camaros bring more money because they're a one body or one year only body style. And uh, I think they're just really desirable because of the body lines. My, I'm one of those people. I'd pay more for a 69 than a 67 or 68. But anyways, uh, this is a LS3. Again, a Tremec TKX five speed, all tech standalone, full tech ride tech pullover, nine inch. Six piston front, four piston rear, blah, blah, blah. Very similar build to mine with the exception of the nine inch, which is a couple grand, honestly. And uh, forge line wheels, super nice wheels. But yeah, again, in general, the 67 and 68 bring less than a 69. This guy's asking 160. So yeah, there's just some cars I found within the East Coast uh, that that are similar to mine and there isn't one that is cheaper than 125,000. So, and I mean, I can go and bring a trailer and, and eBay completed listings and, and go on for, for a while here, but I think you guys get the point. This is what these cars are worth in, in this shape. <clears throat> All right, so now that you guys are back from the build recap, let's determine how much it costs to get here. So if I pull up my trusty spreadsheet, go back to last year, which is technically when I bought the car, I've got all of my list of parts down to the dollar that I have into this car. Not only parts that I've bought, but parts that I've sold as well to recoup some of my money. So let's start with the big one. What did I pay for this car in January of 2022? Paid $40,000 for this car. I actually remember I had this saved in my Facebook Marketplace favorites. The guy was asking $50,000 or $55,000, which I thought was a great deal for the car. It had the ride tech suspension already, full restoration, obviously, nice TMI interior, Dakota digital gauges, just a whole bunch of nice parts for a fully restored 69 Camaro. The reason I didn't jump on it was because I wasn't crazy about some of the stuff on the body, like the front splitter and, and you know, some other stuff. I just, I saved it in my favorites and kind of said, hey, maybe I'll get back to that. I ended up making a wanted post on the uh, first gen Camaro classifieds. And this guy actually came and said, hey, I'm just, you know, south of you in Massachusetts and I'll take 40 grand for the car. So I was like, that's $15,000 off an already fantastic price. I'll be there tomorrow. So came, gave a deposit, picked up the car the next day, 40 grand, good to go. So then we get into all the parts that I've purchased for this car. And the way I'm gonna break this down is basically all the parts that I've purchased for the car and then we'll subtract the parts that I sold to recoup some of that and then we'll get to a final parts investment and then a grand total. So the first part that I purchased for this car are parts. Some of these are, are when I purchased the parts they're kind of random. It's just when I when I placed the order. So you have to bear with me there, but the dollar amounts are exactly right. So the first thing I ordered was the some of the long lead time stuff, which, which was a lot of the Holly parts, the Holly motor training mounts, the Terminator uh, ECU, the 12 inch Pro Dash that took like six months to come in, and then the Cloud uh, Master Cylinder to convert this to a three pedal manual car. So that was $3,730. Uh, I got a clutch and gas pedal assembly, and I think I ended up reusing my brake pedal assembly or modifying that. I was 20 bucks. The knockoff uh, Holly oil pan to adapt the LS motor to the 69 Camaro subframe, that was $237. Now here's where it gets a little bit more complex, and this is a huge reason why I'm so cheap into this car, and that is the Camaro LS3 and TR6060 that are in this car. So instead of buying a drivetrain and transmission, for an, you know, an LS3 and TR6060, which go for anywhere from eight to like $12,000. I bought an entire 2010 Camaro SS. I flew one way down to Baltimore and found a, a 2010 Camaro SS with like 106 or 7,000 miles on it and drove it straight through the night till 4 a.m. 
right here to New Hampshire. And then within a day, I had pulled the motor out. That's another good forums example. The forums are not dead. I found the, that Camaro on a forum, just a guy trying to sell it for like 10 grand and it had some body issues that the paint was peeling and it had been repainted and none of that stuff I cared about. I only cared about the drivetrain, but it ran perfect. Nine grand for a complete clean title, running and driving, drove it 500 miles home, 2010 Camaro SS. That's a great deal. But the Camaro LS3 and TR6060 I have in this car. So the complete motor and transmission, I only have $1,175 into. And the way I got there is I have a separate spreadsheet over here so I purchased that Camaro for $9,000, pulled the motor and transmission basically the next day, sold the roller, complete roller to a guy down the street who was building a race car for $6,500. So that's 70% of my investment right there, right back in my pocket. Sold the catalytic converters for 450, sold, it had a Hurst shifter in it, sold that for 180. Oil cooler, 100 bucks, oil pan, $110. The stock LS3 manifolds, 100 bucks. Stock LS3 cam, some guy with a, a budget project bought that for 70. Stock valve springs, 55. Alternator bracket, 30 bucks. Alternator, 60 bucks. The tail housing and main shaft from when I did the TR6060 to T56 main shaft swap, $70 and $100. So you subtract all that from the 9,000 that I purchased the car for and we get the $1,175 figure. So instead of buying a drivetrain for $10,000 for this car, I bought an entire car, parted out the parts I could, and now I only have just over $1,000 for the motor and transmission in this car. Yeah, that's how you do stuff like this. Back to the main list. Corbo seats, $1,133. All the cam swap associated parts, so the cam, valve springs, gaskets, trunnion upgrade, all that good stuff, uh, 1,165. The speed engineering headers were 318. The T56 Magnum parts that I used to convert the TR6060 to a T56 Magnum tail housing, $767. The gas tank, the fuel system, the fuel lines, which I all pieced together. Uh, so that was from Tanks Inc., as well as some assorted parts from Summit, AN line fittings, uh, all that, you know, gauges, all that stuff. Uh, that was $665. The smooth valve covers on eBay, a clutch speed bleeder, $169. Okay, trunnion kit and header bolts, I guess I ordered those together, $126. The Dirty Dingo alternator bracket and low mount AC bracket, $240. Got a generic Amazon alternator and a mini AC compressor on eBay. Those are combined $176. Clutch kit and flywheel I got from Rock Auto, so that's L7 clutch, flywheel, you know, ARP bolts, all that good stuff, uh, $412. Power steering hose, fittings, flywheel bolts, alternator pigtail. Again, some of this stuff is random. I just ordered it all at the same time. $157. Had to buy a shifter for my Magnum uh, tail housing. That was $120. Fuel filter, regulator, drive shaft yoke. That was $415. The classic industries or whatever it was, uh, radiator and fans was $358. Uh, the AC manifold and some assorted coil relocation stuff. I hit the coils uh, basically down near the headers. That was 90. Push rods, custom measured push rods or custom length push rods are 90, or I'm sorry, 110. Assorted belts and spark plugs, 40 bucks. Intake tube, filter, math adapter, and coupler that I used to build my custom intake here, $53. Uh, Drive-by wire harness is a separate harness for the Holly. Oil sending unit and a couple other sensors, 190. Hurst knob and lever for the shifter, 100 bucks. Drive shaft work, so I had to have the drive shaft that came in the car, shortened, uh, had 1350 U-joints welded on and then balanced. Uh, that's $339. Uh, X-pipe, which I pieced together myself from a generic eBay kit and then assorted fluids to get the car going, $200. The Corbo harnesses and the custom shifter bezel that I made, 140 bucks. Assorted exhaust piping, $388. That's all 304 stainless, all tape welded together. Big brake stuff. <clears throat> so that's all the parts that I used to convert the calipers from the Willwoods to the big C6, Z06. I did all new pads, braided lines, uh, fittings, copper uh, washers. Basically completely rebuilt the calipers plus the brackets from Core 3, so that was 315. Got those subframe connectors and poly bushings. That's 260. Wheels and tires, so that's the weld wheels and the Bridgestone Potenza tires that I just put on a, uh, a couple months ago. That was $1,612. And then powder coating and tint. So that's all the powder coated trim and mirrors. And then the window tint, uh, that was 800. 
So that was a lot, I know, but uh, I just want to have complete transparency with you guys. That is to the dollar, as far as I know, every single part that I've put into this thing since I purchased the car. So that brings our parts grand total to $16,020. So not a, not a small amount of money, but uh, when you consider what this car is worth in this current state, that's not bad, but we're not done yet. Like I said, now we have to subtract all the parts that I was able to sell either off the car or from you know other stuff that I replaced and we'll come to a final number. So this car came with a 307 small block and a turbo 350 or TH350 transmission. I sold the 307 for $1,600 to a guy who's gonna put it in his truck. Sold the TH350 for 300. Like I said, this car had a nice set of decoded digital gauges fitted to the stock cluster when I bought it. I was able to sell those for $630. The horseshoe shifter, it's in all the automatic 69 Camaros. That's $210. Uh, this car had a fully custom exhaust and, and some other, you know, with cutouts and magnet flow mufflers. It was a pretty nice setup. I sold that to another first gen guy who was going to put it on his car for $420. The seats, this car had TMI covered front seats, super nice setup. Uh, just I wanted to go with the Corbos. I sold the front seats for $1,450. I sold those cutouts out of the exhaust for $260. Stock fan, $50. I have fuel tank on here with nothing next to it. Uh, if I remember right, I had the thing for sale for like a hundred bucks for like a year and no one wanted it. So I took it to the dump, I think six months ago. So no money back there. The Willwood calipers that were on the car when I bought it, that's $700. Those US Mag Ramblers that some of you guys liked that I absolutely did not like, I was able to sell those for $1,300. So that's a grand total of $6,920 that I was able to sell in parts which brings our grand total invested uh, in this car, as far as like parts investment in this car, where's the 69 Camaro, to $9,100. So net investment is $9,100. Add that to our $40,000 original purchase price. For all you math whiz out there, the grand total is $49,100 that I have into this Fully pro touring, fully restored, LS3, TR6060, ride tech, tubular suspension all around, big brakes, weld wheels, full custom interior, Holly Terminator, digital dash, everything. $49,100 into this car. So that is a fantastic price to be into this car. <sighs> that was a lot. And guys, the purpose of this video is not to, you know, flex that I have a $125,000 Camaro. That is, that is not my intention. That is not what I want at all. I just want to drive home the point to you guys that you don't need that kind of money to build something like this if you have the skills and the time to devote to build it. Obviously, I have probably hundreds of hours in this thing. And if you add up labor or you're paying someone else to do it, that $49,000 price goes way, way up. But if you are a little bit handy like me, you have a garage and, and some space to work on something and you can hunt for deals like I do, this is entirely possible. It doesn't have to be this car either. I, I can't tell you how many people told me when I built my 2004 Cobra, converted it from the Eaton Supercharger to a turbo setup. Everyone said you couldn't go turbo for less than 20 grand. And I was in college at the time. I had little to no money. And I think I did it for like 3,500 bucks by doing the work myself, hunting around for deals and uh, just being smart, buying parts. So that, you know, I've, I've done it on tons and tons of vehicles, just cause everyone online says you can't do it for less than this dollar amount. They're wrong usually, just, just get out there and do it. Another thing to note here is if you started with a rusty shell needing complete restoration, you would probably be over 150 to 200 grand into this car. I have receipts from the previous owner for this car totaling, I think it was 30 grand just in paint and body work doesn't include literally anything else, not the ride tech suspension, not the motor work, not the wheels and tires, not glass, not trim, not interior, nothing. So that's where I got a lot of savings here was getting the, the base car so cheap. So that is hugely important when you're finding a project like this. If you're a body guy, you can probably save some money, but if you're not a body guy like me, I wanted a car that was already done as far as body work and I could focus on the drivetrain. That saved me a ton of money. I think the previous owner had like 60 or 70 grand into this thing and I just took it off his hands for, for 40. He just wanted it gone, didn't want to put another dime into it. So if you can hop around and find some deals, you can do the same thing. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this cost recap. Like I said, I don't do these all that often, but I have had some positive feedback on the ones I've done in the past. And I, I think that this is a great example of how you can build something really cool that's worth a ton of money and not have nearly that much into it. Don't worry, we've got plenty more content coming on everything else, especially this blue basket case over here. Give it a little sneak peek. Oop, motor's out. So you guys are gonna wanna tune in for that. Thank you guys as always for watching. Catch you in the next one.